AQA, A level physics, nuclear instability. Uh, this bit of the specification is what we're going to do. Uh, the actual bit about technetium 99 I did in the last video, so I'm not going to repeat myself there. So these are some of the isotopes of lithium. Now, what have they got in common and how are they different? Well, one thing they have in common is that they've all got three protons. They've got an atomic number, a proton number of three. So they've all got three protons, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. So some of them will be heavier, yes, because they have a bigger mass number. Now, there's another very important difference, and that is those two isotopes are stable. OK, that means that that nucleus, unless it ends up inside a, a star or something, uh, will always stay the same. It won't decay. And 92.4% is lithium 7.3, 3 7.6% uh, is lithium 6.3. Those isotopes are stable. And these isotopes and these isotopes are unstable. And interestingly, the ones with lots and lots of neutrons, they decay by, by uh, emitting a beta minus. Uh, and the ones down there, they decay by emitting a beta plus, a positron. OK, the ones with too many neutrons uh, chuck out an electron. Uh, the ones with not enough neutrons chuck out a positron. Now, this is a graph for all of the isotopes. The, the black line in the middle is the stable isotopes. And you will notice that above the line, above the line, we have uh, the beta minus emitters, which is in blue. And below the line, we have the positron emitters, which is in orange on this graph. So this is an important graph. It's a graph of N against Z. The, the specification says you only need to know it for the stable isotopes. Now, for the stable isotopes, you should see that uh, the graph of N against Z, N against Z, starts off at 45 degrees, but then starts curving upwards like that. So basically, for the, the small atoms, Neutrons to protons is about one to one. For the much bigger atoms, the bigger nuclei, neutron, neutrons to protons is about three to two. Uh, larger nuclei need more neutrons to be stable. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, larger nuclei are more likely to emit alpha particles. The, the yellow ones there are alpha particles and the alpha emitters tend to be higher up, tend to be the, the, big, the big fat nuclei up there. Okay, uh, Beta minus emitters are above the stability line, beta plus emitters, uh, and the ones that do electron capture as well are below the stability line. So the ratio of neutrons to protons is very important to stability. There's all kinds of factors affect the stability of a nucleus. Uh, we don't do, but something called the water drop model, and there's about half a dozen different terms in it. But one of the most important ones is the ratio of neutrons to protons. Now, why do nuclei need neutrons? You can think of it as the neutrons provide superglue to hold the nucleus together. And by superglue, I mean the strong nuclear force. So the neutrons provide enough strong nuclear force because these protons are repelling each other like crazy because they're positively charged and very close together. So they need superglue, Velcro to hold it together. And the neutrons also act as spacers. They get in between the protons to try and keep them apart. However, if you've got too many neutrons, then that will cause instability as well. And the ratio, as we said on the last slide, of N to Z, for small nuclei, the, for stability, it's one to one. And then for large nuclei, it goes up to about three to two. 
So what happens if a, if a nucleus has too many neutrons, then what happens is that a neutron decays into a proton and an electron, and we also get an antineutrino as well. For example, the one I learn is carbon-14, yeah, because it's used in carbon dating. And carbon-14 goes to nitrogen-14, and we get a beta minus, and we get a antineutrino. We will notice that our, our lepton number, that has a lepton number of plus one, that has a lepton number of minus one, that's conserved. Um, charge is conserved. You know, we're creating a, a negative and a positive. Your hadron number is conserved. Momentum is conserved, etc., etc. So a neutron changes into a proton and an electron and an antiparticle because we're creating a particle. If you've got uh, not enough neutrons, then a proton changes into a neutron. The example I learn is oxygen 15 because that's used in PET scans. So I learned this equation. Uh, an oxygen 15, a proton changes into a neutron. And this time we get a positron uh, and a neutrino. So again, our lepton number is conserved, hadron number is conserved, everything's conserved. But here, in this one, the number of neutrons goes down by one. The mass number stays the same. In this one here, the number of neutrons goes up by one, uh, and the proton number goes down. Also, electron capture as well, if you've got too many neutrons. So this is a potassium, potassium 40, capturing an electron, becoming argon 18, sorry, argon 40, plus a neutrino. Alpha decay is a bit simpler. Uh, basically, we said that the big boys, the big fat nuclei, tend to give off alpha uh, because they're a bit too heavy. Uh, and so a good way of losing mass is by chucking out an alpha particle. For example, this one here, this isotope of plutonium, chucking out an alpha particle. Uh, al an alpha particle, this little configuration of two protons and two neutrons is a very stable little like a uh, little honey nut cluster, uh, a little clique, a little gang of four particles that hangs around together. And even inside the nucleus, you get apparently you get these gangs of particles bodding around in groups of four. It's a very stable, they fit together very, very nicely. Uh, and one way of losing weight is to chuck one of these things out. Now, uh, N against Z, if you like, if we zoom into our N against Z graph, so beta minus decay, yes, we said we lose a neutron, we gain a proton, so basically we're going diagonally in that direction, aren't we? Yes, that way. Uh, positron decay, beta plus decay is the opposite, we're going up that direction there, we're gaining a neutron, we're losing a proton. Uh, alpha is uh, a bigger one. We come all the way from there to there. We lose two protons. We lose two neutrons. Now, this diagram here, the big diagram in the middle, is a decay chain. We're starting here with this isotope of uranium, and we're going from there to there to there. Uh, it might go that way. It might go that way. Uh, when we get to here, it might go that way, it might go that way, uh, and it's all basically a, a probability thing, which actual route it takes down the chain, but we end up, uh, as so many of these decay chains do, we end up with an isotope of lead. That's our stable isotope there. So we're starting with uranium, and we're working our way all the way down to this isotope of lead. Uh, is a little question for you to have a go at. Um, pause the video, have a think, uh, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. Seven alphas, four beta minuses, uh, mass number goes down 28, uh, atomic number, proton number goes down by 10. Gamma decay, 
Now, in a gamma decay, the, the mass number and the atomic number don't change. What happens is that just as you can excite an atom, do you remember energy levels in atoms, an energy level diagram for this electron in an atom, and then it gives off photons? Well, it's the same thing for nuclei. Nuclei can become excited. Very often they are excited if you've just chucked out an alpha particle uh, and maybe they've got a bit of energy left over after, they've, after some other type of decay has happened. And so the nucleus is left in an excited state. And then what happens is it gets rid of this extra energy and it goes to its ground state by giving off a gamma photon. So nuclei have energy levels as well. This is a, an energy level diagram for nickel 60, apparently. Um, one thing to notice is that the amounts of energy involved uh, are much greater than for atomic energy levels. If we look at these, what th this one here, that's, that's, you know, we're talking mega electron volts. That's two, two mevs there. That's two and a half mevs. That's 2.6 mevs. Uh, with, the, with the atomic ones, it was only kind of, you know, about seven, eight, whatever electron volts. This is millions of electron volts.